If you had access to a cleaning expert, you could ask a cleaning expert anything. What would you ask them? Well, we put this question out on Instagram and got a ton of questions. So in this video, I am that cleaning expert and I am answering your questions. So stay tuned for a very in-depth Q&A where I answer some of your hot topic cleaning questions. Keep it simple underscore joy says, how do you get grease slash hair oil out of a pillowcase? Nothing I have tried has worked. So if you're someone who sleeps with treatments in your hair or on your skin, that is how you get an oily, dirty pillowcase. Or if you're not laundering your pillowcase frequently enough, that is how that can happen. Uh, two recommendations for you. One, you can add a pre-treater directly onto the pillowcase and leave it. I would say for 30 to 60 minutes before you launder. That's number one. Number two, you can use something like an enzyme cleaner, something like a back out uh, would be a great pre-treater that you can apply uh, onto the pillowcase, launder it and see what happens. Sometimes for something like this, you might have to do it a couple of times and I will give you a bonus one just because I'm nice. You can soak it in an oxygen bleach product like OxyClean uh, and hot water and you can do that overnight and see what happens. Aries underscore skies says, what best cleans granite countertops? Simple question, simple answer. You can buy a specialty granite or natural stone cleaner. You can also make your own. I've got a DIY recipe linked down below for you. Alaskan Moss says, how do I get over the Sisyphean nature of cleaning and learn to like repeating these tasks? And we all have to thank you. Um, the Clean My Space nation, nation at large and here at the Clean My Space HQ, because we, we learned a new word today, Sisyphean. And that means a task that never has an end in sight. So whenever you guys are feeling frustrated about laundry or dishes, you now have a bigger word for it. So you're welcome. Uh, thanks to Alaskan Moss. The answer, like there's, there is no magic pill here. There's no answer. All I can say is the end result is worth the effort. Find every way you can to make it as autopilot as possible so that you can think about something else, you can have a conversation, you can listen to a podcast, take a phone call, whatever it is that you can do to just put your mind at ease when you're getting these annoying Sisyphean tasks out of the way and revel in the fact that they're done when they're done and try not to think about the big picture because if you think about, I'm just gonna unload the dishwasher only to have to use the dishes and then put them back in, and it's a cycle, it will drive you crazy. So don't focus on that. Queen Bees underscore Hive says, the teenage room smell is like a toxic waste dump every morning. How do you combat those odors? Well, you shut the door. No, I'm kidding, seriously. Uh, sheets are a big contributor to that. So make sure that linen is washed regularly. If there's dirty laundry in there, same thing, it should come out. That is what contributes to a lot of the smells. Also, teenagers' bodies are changing and a lot of, there's a, there are a lot of smells that are coming out that weren't previously there. So staying on top of laundering clothes is really important. I would say open windows, put things like baking soda, like open boxes of baking soda in there. That will really help combat odors. And aside from that, just know that your kids aren't probably going to smell like that forever. Uh, the smell is likely not bothering them. And if it's bothering you, like I say, just shut the door, plug your nose and move on. Westy One Lover says, how do you keep your home as dust free as possible? I hate dusting. I agree. It's such an annoying task. The way to not have to dust is to make sure that your furnace filter is changed on a regular basis. That would be four times a year, four times a year at the change of every season. Number two, using a HEPA vacuum very regularly. If you are vacuuming once or twice a week, you will notice that dust is not settling or floating around as much. That is why so many people also love robot vacuums. While they don't do deep vacuums, they manage the dust that's floating around in your home so that less of it settles on the floor and on your items and more of it just gets sucked up on the regular. Deedlebug1965 says, what's a fast way to clean wooden blinds? Ugh. I clean houses for a living and it takes forever to vacuum a 3,400 square foot house full of blinds. I hate blinds. That was her, not me. But I agree with you. Blinds are really challenging to clean. 
um, from one professional house cleaner to another, if you see lots of wooden blinds in someone's home, you can certainly upcharge because it is going to take you more time to clean them and you're on the right track. I mean, you can use a vacuum attachment and you just have to go back and forth and then flip the blinds over to the other side, do the same thing. You can also use a microfiber cloth. The Makers Clean Ultra Plush microfiber cloths are a great option for something like that. But aside from that, there's no real cheat. There's no fast way to get there. You just gotta do the job the way it's supposed to be done and charge appropriately. Joe Alla Haas says, how to make your home always smell great. I've got great videos all about that that I will link for you down below. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. Nambia says, I would like to ask you about recycling strategies for used batteries, used light bulbs, used up essential oil bottles, etc." So I love this question and it's a little bit complex and that's because it really depends on the municipality or township or area that you live and what their recycling policies are. Generally speaking, anything, if you get an inkling that maybe you shouldn't throw it in the garbage, follow that, you probably shouldn't. You can go on your local municipality's website and see what the recycling rules for your area are. So to give you a few examples, Textiles, generally speaking, there will be a textile recycling drop-off point that you can take your textiles to. They don't go in the garbage. Batteries, we have a box of batteries in our home for fresh batteries, and then we have a zipper lock bag where we put dead batteries in, uh, and you can take those to a store like Best Buy or Staples, and you can give them your used batteries. There are also depots that you can drop off your batteries. Same thing goes for paint and cleaning supplies medication rather than throwing that out terrible idea put it in a bag collect it somewhere safe and then when you're ready you can take it to a pharmacy and they will take back your expired medications north star 730 says my one question would be what does your cleaning schedule look like daily weekly monthly etc i know there are others out there but i'd really like to know what your i would really like to know is that was my english not hers what yours is <laughs> thanks for sharing all your knowledge um, I talk about cleaning routines in my book and I will link that for you down below. We are also planning on doing a routines video. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can also let us know in the comments down below. Uh, it is a longer answer to this question, which is why I don't want to get into too much detail, but basically I clean the kind of most important areas or like the most obviously dirty areas and easiest areas to get dirty each and every day, like our kitchen. We try to make our bed every day and put general mess and clutter away. Uh, on a weekly basis, we do more of the dusting, vacuuming, mopping type jobs and you know cleaning toilet, cleaning shower. And monthly is more of those smaller jobs like baseboards, organization product projects that kind of thing. But again, we'll be putting a video out where we'll go into great detail about this. F Meal says, why does my home feel like it will never be completely clean? Well, we have learned that cleaning is a Sisyphean task in and of itself. Aren't I intellectual? Uh, your home will never be completely clean because you live in it or people live in it. And the second that anyone comes home after your house has been cleaned, they're going to live and function and exist in that home and make a mess. So the best thing that you can do is try to stay on top of the mess as much as you can and uh, lower your anxiety level around that. Cause I know a lot of us feel anxious, uh, frustrated, annoyed. We get a lot of negative emotions around cleaning uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Just know that when you do clean, feel really good about it uh, and try not to get too frustrated when it falls out of shape a little bit. Evelina Fortuna says, what is the etiquette around having hired help clean your home? I love that you asked this question because there is an etiquette to it. So I'm appreciative that I get to answer this because when I first started my cleaning service, I was in people's homes cleaning. And now of course I employ many people who do the exact same thing. Here is what a cleaning professional appreciates. First of all, don't leave your house in a disaster zone state. Like just cause you know, the person's coming over to clean your house does not mean that you get to leave a trail of disaster behind you for the last four days leading up to their arrival. Uh, so be respectful that way. Second of all, try to put away your personal items. It's just not lovely for people to have to see that and to try to figure out where those things go. You can use your imagination about what those personal items are. 
The next thing I would say is it, when there's that old adage, a tidy before the cleaning person comes, the reason that's important is because you want the cleaning person to actually clean, not tidy. Because A, they don't know where everything belongs in your house. And then when you're looking for the can opener and they put it in the most logical space for them, it's likely not gonna be the most logical space for you. So either when they first come, you have to initiate them and teach them about everything in your entire home, which some people do, and that's great. The cleaning person can make notes about that. Alternatively, you can tidy up quickly, just put things away before someone comes over and then let them actually do the cleaning. Because as I've said many times, there's a distinction, a distinction between cleaning and tidying. And the final thing I'll say is just be polite. If you're home, if you were from home, try to stay out of their way. Um, offer them something to drink, uh, make sure that you're hospitable, and be kind. Be nice to them, don't yell. If you don't like something, just let them know in a kind way. They want to impress you, they want to maintain you as a client. Just treat them the way that you would want to be treated. Sarcastic Asian friend says, can you clean my house? And I don't think that was a sarcastic question. Um, and here's my non-sarcastic answer, no, because everybody asked me to clean their house. And my job is to teach you how to clean your own house. So no. Well, there you go. I hope that's cleared up some cleaning questions that you might have. And if I haven't answered a cleaning question that you have, definitely let me know what that is in the comments down below because we would love to put more of these videos out for you. And on the topic of cleaning like a pro, we have a video about how to clean your sink like a pro, which I've got right over here, so you can check that out. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Makers Clean channel. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.